Hello, um, I'm Amit Kurt. I'm a hematologist and bone marrow transplant physician. I'm currently working in the clinical hematology department of the Royal Melbourne Hospital and the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Um, I, um, a large part of my role is uh, carrying out um, bone marrow transplants for patients with a wide variety of hematologic disorders, including lymphoma. For an uh, autologous transplant, there's two aspects to it. One is um, collection of the stem cells from the patient, and that process usually occurs over about a week. Um, we use certain techniques which include chemotherapy with and without uh, with chemotherapy with agents such as growth factors um, to which mobilize the stem cells, they, they provoke the bone marrow to producing more stem cells and these are, are then collected um, from the blood. Um, so that, that so we give the, growth, the chemotherapy and the growth factor um, on, on a, in a particular week and then we continue the growth factor um, for about uh, um, a week or so and we collect the stem cells from the blood um, uh, a week later and with a special machine that we call an apheresis machine. So that, uh, and that collection process usually takes a couple of days, um, um, which uh, there's a couple of episodes which last about three hours um, on two or three consecutive days to collect the number of stem cells that we want. Once those uh, cells are collected, they're stored in the stem cell bank and we then move on to the actual transplant procedure um, which for which a patient is usually in hospital for about three weeks. The first week receiving um, chemotherapy that we call the conditioning chemotherapy and um, after this chemotherapy is complete, the stem cells are infused into the, into the patient and then there is a about two week period of recovery after that. Now, this is when uh, people can sometimes feel unwell um, with uh, things like infection, sometimes having a sore mouth um, or a sore gut um, and some other kind, uh, other types of side effects which need uh, careful management as an inpatient. So um, people often feel very tired while going through this procedure um, and it, it can uh, um, uh, it can be um, can be challenging um, uh, for about a week or so in hospital when uh, pe when people feel quite unwell. Once uh, once uh, someone recovers from from the procedure and is discharged, um, it it still takes fatigue. It, it fatigue it can still be an issue, and it still takes um, a few weeks to get back to um, a level of uh, um, of pre transplant function. So. I would say for, for, for most autographs um, uh, for uh, a reasonable period of recovery both inpatient and after discharge is about four to six weeks. For the other type of transplant, the allogenic transplant, that's a longer process. The, the actual process uh, is similar to the autograft where um, we give chemotherapy and certain other types of drugs. Um, to allow the donor cells to come into the patient's body and, and then there is, a, there is a period of recovery which for, for most patients is about um, three to four weeks. So the total period in hospital can be uh, four to five weeks. There is again uh, about two month period of recovery after this in which there is very intensive close outpatient follow-up. Again, certain um, issues can um, um, be, an, be a problem during this uh, late, sort of late transplant period the, uh, in the first three months post allograft where infections and a particular immunological problem or an immune related problem called graft versus host disease. Um, has to be managed where the incoming or the donor cells can see certain parts of the, the host or the patient as foreign and act against them. And we have various strategies to prevent this problem from occurring. It's called graft versus host disease. Um, and 
and we, if it does occur, we have certain types of medications to, to manage, uh, manage the issue. So, so these infection can also be a problem uh, during this time um, and various types of viral, fungal and bacterial infections need to be managed with both preventive medications and close monitoring and treatment um, um, if, uh, if, they do, if, they, if they do occur in spite of um, everything we've, um, 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 we've used to try and prevent them. So it's quite a complex process and uh, can often involve a long period of recovery. And, and, but I, I would say for, for most people after the first three months, the, um, the, the whole situation and the whole um, uh, the clinical problems settle down and people are able to, to get back to a degree of normalcy after that.